let's talk about halation. Halation is an optical phenomenon that occurs in analog photography and filmmaking, where a halo-like glow or diffusion of light appears around bright objects or light sources. It is caused by light scattering and reflecting within the layers of the film and camera. The presence of an anti-halation layer in film helps to minimize this effect by reducing the spread of residual light and softening the appearance of halos. Halations are mostly red due to how emulsion layers are set up in film. Red is the last color emulsion layer, therefore gets most of the reflection from the back. In some cases, light may also penetrate the green layer. The halos then exhibit an orange tint. Interesting theory. Let's have a look on how we can recreate halation using Affinity Photo. I will first share three similar videos to create halation and at the end of the video, I will share the fourth method for a more manual workflow. So here's our test image. First thing I'm going to do is to duplicate the image. Halation usually occurs around bright areas of an image, so we need to filter the bright areas. To do that, I'm going to use the threshold adjustment. With the threshold adjustment, we can select the areas where halation will need to occur. In this case, it will be mainly the lights located on the center top of the image. In order to create the halo effect, I'm going to add a Gaussian blur filter on top of the threshold adjustment and increase the blur until we have nice soft edges. As seen in the beginning of the video, halation occurs mostly in the red, so I'm going to add a fill layer and make sure it gets the red color. The fill layer will be your halation color, so for an orange halation effect, you can set this color to orange, but I'll keep it red for this example. The red fill layer filled the whole canvas, but we only want this to apply to the blurred white area we created earlier. To do that, I can change the blend mode to linear burn or multiply. The linear burn and the multiply blend modes are part of the darkened group, where the applied layer will have no effect on black. This is why the whites have become red and the blacks remained untouched by the red, resulting in exactly what we need. Excellent, we're almost done. Let's group the three layers we created and name the group. I'm going to call it Halation Threshold. To apply the halation effect, we just need to set the blend mode of this group to screen. The screen blend mode is part of the lighten group. In the lighten blend modes, black has no effect on the layer below. So by using the screen blend mode, the blacks are ignored from the group layer and the reds are used to brighten the image below which at the end creates the halation effect we were looking for. Pretty awesome! To make the halation stronger, we can add a curves adjustment to the group. By adjusting the curve, the halation can become more or less visible. This is because the curves adjustment modifies the brightness of the red. If you prefer, you could also use a brightness and contrast adjustment or a levels adjustment. Additionally, we have the option to adjust the threshold, thereby influencing the regions of the image that exhibit halation. It would make sense to apply the halation predominantly to the bright areas. Pretty neat. Now let's look at a second method, which basically applies the same theory, but instead of using a threshold adjustment, we will use blend ranges, and as you know by now, I love blend ranges. Let's start again by duplicating the image, followed by adding a fill layer. The fill layer should be below the duplicated image and the color will need to be black. Now, I'm going to open the blend range of the duplicated image layer. By changing the source layer range, we can exclude the darker areas and in fact, we get a very similar effect just like the threshold adjustment. The reason why I prefer this over the threshold adjustment is that it generates a smoother result, whereas the threshold creates a more pixelated result due to the nature of being a boolean on-off adjustment. Now we can apply the same steps. Instead of adding a Gaussian blur, I will use the box blur filter. 
This sometimes creates a more pleasing result. And of course, the red fill layer in multiply blend mode to make things red. To get the halation effect, just as before, we can group these layers and set the blend mode of it to screen. Pretty cool. Before we proceed with the third method, let me assign a name to the group and hide it. As you understood by now, for the halation effect, we want to get blurred red lines around bright subjects. This time, let's try something more creative by using the maximum blur filter. We start again by duplicating the image layer. Next, we can add a red fill layer and make this a child of the duplicated image layer. This will fill the canvas of the image with red. But when we change the blend mode of the fill layer to multiply, the image will be colored to red. Excellent! Now I'm going to blur the image by adding a Gaussian blur filter. So far so good. Time to add the maximum blur filter. By default the filter will be added as a child to the image layer. But I want it on top of the blurred image. So I will drag it out and put it on top of the image layer. Let's increase the radius of the maximum blur and it looks like nothing has changed. But see what happens when we change the blend mode of this filter layer to difference. This will show us exactly what is being applied by the maximum filter. By adjusting the radius I can select the area where the halation will occur. Pretty neat. As a final step I will add a Gaussian blur on top of it to smoothen things down. And if I apply this Gaussian blur in soft light blend mode we only get the strongest areas. Notice how we got a very similar result as the previous methods. A nice red blur around the bright areas of the image. Let's group these layers again and apply the group in screen blend mode to get the halation effect. The advantage of this method compared to the previous method is that it works on contours. By adjusting the maximum blur radius notice how more halation is added to more subjects. The strength of the halation can be controlled with the first Gaussian blur which was applied to the duplicate of the image. Let's wrap up this image. I think the halation will work better if the image will be a bit darker. To achieve that we can add a curves adjustment and lower the curve. I'm going to turn off the last halation group and use the threshold halation for this image. I think the image can be even a bit darker. So let me quickly fine tune the curves adjustment. Next I want to brighten the highlights. Here is an interesting method for you. I will duplicate the image layer and move it on top of the curves adjustment. Next a bit of blur by adding a Gaussian blur filter. Here comes the tricky part. I'm going to change the blend mode of the blur layer to difference and I will do the same for the image. To achieve the brighten effect I will create a group and put the image with the blur into it. When we set the blend mode of this group to color dodge we get a nice cool effect where the brighter areas are quite stronger. Pretty interesting isn't it? If I toggle it on and off you can clearly see the effect of this group. I'm going to enable the top halation group again to increase the halation. I also want to add a blend range to it so that this halation will not affect the darker areas. For this I'm going to make another group and move the halation group inside it. Now I can change the blend range as required. By the way, the reason why I'm doing this is because Affinity has some kind of glitch where a group or a layer having a filter applied blend ranges do not work somehow. Putting it in a new group fixes that. I also want to sharpen the image a bit. To sharpen I'm going to duplicate the original image layer and apply a maximum live filter. Let me turn off all the other groups so we can better see what is going on. When I set the blend mode of the maximum blur to difference, we get the lines created by the maximum blur. If we subtract what we are seeing from the original image, we will make the edges darker. Creating a darken with sharpen effect. So let's change the blend mode of this layer to subtract. Notice how the image has gotten darker but also sharper. As there is more contrast in the lines. 
the sharpen and darken fits perfectly with our composition as we also used a curves adjustment to darken the composition earlier. Let's enable the adjustments and see the final result. Pretty awesome! As I have two halation groups applied, we can experiment by changing the halation color. Remember that the halation usually occurs in the red channel, but the reflected light might also hit the green. To achieve that, we can simply change the halation color in one of the halation groups. Let's change it in the top group. When I change the halation color to green, notice how we get a more of an orange halation. Pretty awesome! Let's resend back to red and continue looking at some examples. Keep watching as I will share the final technique after the examples. So here is a very similar image. The image was quite cold, so with a white balance I made it a bit warmer and then applied the same steps as before, where I brightened the highlights and used a curves adjustment to dim down the overall image. And on top our halation group. Let's look at this example. The image is not suited for halation, but I wanted to show you the advantage of the maximum blur version. When I turn the threshold method, notice how very little areas will get halation. If we wanted halation around the subject, the maximum blur version is much more suitable as you can see. Let me set the group to screen blend mode and notice how the halation is around the subject. Compare this with the threshold version. Remember you can always apply a mask to the maximum blur group for the areas you don't want to have halation. Which brings me to the final method. As you have seen, with all the previous methods you cannot really control where you want the halation to occur. This method will allow you to paint the halation to the areas you want. Let's start with a clean image. As we are going to paint ourselves, we can just add a recolor adjustment on top of the image. This will make everything red. Next, I'm going to add an empty mask by clicking with Option or Alt on the mask icon in the Players panel. Let's zoom in a bit. Now, with a white soft flow brush, we can paint in the halation on the areas we like. Pretty easy, right? Here are a couple of tips to really fine-tune the mask we just painted in. First, I'm going to add a blur filter and move it to the mask layer. This way our painted mask will become softer. Make sure that the preserve alpha is turned off, as the mask layer only contains an alpha channel. To change the mask density, we can add a curves adjustment and move this to the mask. In the Curves dialog, you can select the Alpha channel and fine-tune the strength or the density of the mask by modifying the Alpha curve. By making the highlights stronger, we get a much stronger result. As a final step, if you think the halation is too thick, we can add a minimum blur on top of the mask. By increasing the radius of the minimum blur, the mask will shrink, resulting in a thinner halation. We can now paint on the areas where we want halation to occur and as we have only used live layers, we can fine tune the effect later at any time. I have covered a lot of material in this video and I hope you learned something new along the way. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions or want me to do a follow up on a specific method shown during this video. Thank you for watching. And until the next video.